Love and Money Secrets TV. I'm Dame Lillian Walker, your host, and we are going to continue our review and study of Becoming Supernatural, the book by Dr. Joe Dispenza. So thanks you for, thank you for tuning in, tapping in, and turning on tonight. So let's get started. Without further ado, we're going to begin with chapter three, and here we go. And I want to point out something we learned last night in chapter two when we reviewed this. One of the things that Jennifer Crone shared with us was the acronym PAIN, that when you have pain in the body, as you know, Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about the pain that we feel in the body is the memory of the past feelings and emotions that are lodged in our body because our body records those past emotions and it manifests as pain in the body. And she said that the acronym PAIN stands for pay attention inside now. Very enlightening, I thought. Wow, it doesn't matter if it's physical or emotional pain, psychological pain, pay attention inside now. Don't ignore that pain. There's something you need to address. And Dr. David Snyder says that uh, we haven't been conditioned to deal with our emotions and how to handle those unpleasant circumstances. And uh, he puts the example of, you know, you might be, you know, how many of us have been driving in our cars? We're not thinking really about anything. We're just maybe focused on where it is that we're, our destination, where we're on our way to. And then all of a sudden you have a past thought and feeling that bubbles up you had either an event or a person, and now all of a sudden you have these upriled feelings of either anger, frustration, uh, whatever the case might be, and you're like, nope, I don't want to deal with this now, and then you suppress and depress them again. And he says, and he says, just like Dr. Joe says, you're not supposed to just push them down, because what happens is that from a psyche, from a psychological standpoint, which your brain is doing, you have your super consciousness, your consciousness, and your subconsciousness. And what happens is that your conscious mind is normally the dominant, seemingly the dominant force, but your subconscious mind, when it sees that you're, you're relaxed and you don't have your focus and your attention on any one particular thing, it goes, ah, oh, we can deal with this stuff that hasn't been dealt with we can deal with this now because you're relaxed and you're not thinking about anything. So boom, that, bub that bubbles up. And what we should have learned by now to do is that when those unwanted thoughts, feelings, and emotions bubble up unexpectedly, we're gonna go now from this point forward, now that we're consciously aware of what's really at hand and what's going on, is like, oh, instead of me suppressing and putting this away for a rainy day or just ignoring it altogether and being in denial about it. Oh, this is coming up. This is an issue that I still need to handle. And so then you take the responsibility of saying, okay, yeah, I'm going to own this. I'm going to keep the lessons that I've learned from this particular circumstance and I'm going to get rid of the rest because the rest doesn't serve me. And once you are aware, of what's really going on and you address the issue at hand, then now your, your mind and your brain is going, okay, we can let go of all of this and the triggers that are associated with that memory because we're going to retain the wisdom from that experience and let go of the rest that doesn't serve you any longer. And that is one of the ways that we use the neuro health reset that I've been doing on so many, you know, video one-on-ones, on Facebook lives and et cetera, is to help people not only receive physical relief of pain, but also emotional and spiritual release of pain. Okay, so let's move on to chapter three. And chapter three is tuning in to the new potentials in quantum. So getting beyond our body, our environment and time isn't easy but it's worth it because once we disconnect from three dimension reality, we enter a whole other reality called quantum, the realm of infinite possibilities. 
Describing this reality is a bit challenging because it's unlike anything we are familiar with in the physical universe. The rules of Newtonian physics, the way we are used to thinking the world works, simply doesn't apply. Now, some, I'm going to pause right here because uh, oftentimes people ask, it's like, I don't get it. What's that thing about Newtonian <laughs> physics? Well, you know, you have Newton's third law of cause and effect. We all know that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, which is one of the laws in, in physics. And so that's what they're talking about, Newtonian physics. Newtonian physics also happens to apply to a linear way of things happening, happening in the universe. You also have the natural selection theory, and there's a, a whole host of other things. I encourage you to Google Newtonian physics, um, not because I want to give you busy work, but there's something to be said. You're right now watching and hearing this information. And the way our brain and our bodies work, we are going to integrate and absorb and learn this information at a greater and deeper level if you write Newtonian physics down and then Google it on whatever notepad of paper that you have. And you actually physically, after this is done, you actually Google it. Now you're interacting. It's a neurosomatic activity where you're involving more of the senses. You're actually recalling Newtonian physics. Now you're actually engaging your attention and searching for the answer. And you're going to be reading that as you type in, that is putting it into your memory bank so that you're going to remember it better because now it's the second, it's actually going to be your third exposure. After you watch this, now you're going to think about it. It's your second exposure. Your th third exposure will be as you type it in. Your fourth exposure is when the information pops up on the screen. And then you, if you read it out loud, then now you're engaging your hearing senses as well because you're going to hear your own voice saying it. And now you're going to absorb and make it your own. And you're going to recall it much better. Okay, so moving on. The quantum or unified field is an invisible field of energy and information. Or you could say a field of intelligence or consciousness that exists beyond space and time. So nothing physical or material exists here. It's beyond anything you can perceive with your senses. This unified field of energy and information is what governs all the laws of nature. And scientists have been working to quantify this process so we can fully understand it. And they're discovering more and more all the time. So based on my knowledge and experience, I believe there's a self-organizing intelligence that is energy. And it is observing all of the universe and galaxies into order. So some people sometimes will say to me that this idea seems a bit unscientific. I always answer them with the same question. What happens after an explosion? Order or disorder? Their answer is always that disorder results. Then I ask, so why after the Big Bang, which was the biggest explosion ever, has so much order been created? Some intelligence must be organizing its energy and matter into form and unifying all the forces of nature to create such a masterpiece. That intelligence, that energy is the quantum or unified field. To give you some idea of what this field is like, imagine taking away all the peoples and bodies on Earth. All the animals and plants and physical objects, both natural and man-made. All of the continents, the oceans, and even the Earth itself. Imagine you could then take away all the planets, moons, and stars in our solar system, including our sun. And then imagine taking away all the other solar systems in our galaxy, and then all the galaxies in the universe. There's no air, and there isn't even any light that you can see with your eyes. There's just absolute blackness, the void, the zero point field. It's important to remember this because when you are a consciousness in the present moment, 
unfold into the unified field, you will be in an infinite black space, void of anything physical. So now imagine that not only do you not see anything here, but because you enter into this realm without a physical body, you also have no sight with which to see, nor do you have the capacity to hear, feel, feel smell, or taste. You have no senses here at all. The only way you can exist in the quantum is as an awareness. Or better said, the only way you can experience this realm is with your awareness, not your senses. So, and since consciousness is awareness, and awareness is paying attention and noticing, once you are beyond the world of the senses, when you pay attention to the energy of the quantum field, your consciousness is connecting to greater levels of frequency and information. Yet as strange as it may sound, the quantum field is not empty. It's an infinite field filled with frequency or energy and all frequency carries information. I'm going to repeat that. All frequency carries information. So think of the quantum field as being filled with infinite amounts of energy vibrating beyond the physical world of matter and beyond our senses, invisible waves of energy available for us to use in creation. What exactly can we create with all this energy swimming in an infinite sea of potentials? That's up to us because in short, the quantum field is the state in which all possibilities exist. And as I just said, when we find ourselves in quantum universe, we exist simply as an awareness or as a consciousness specifically an awareness that is paying attention to or observing a field of infinite possibilities existing within an even greater consciousness and a greater level of energy. So as you enter this endless, vast space as an awareness, there are no bodies, no people, no objects, no places, no time. Instead, infinite unknown possibilities exist as energy. So if you find yourself thinking about knowns in your life, you are back in the three-dimensional reality of space and time. But if you can stay in the blackness of the unknown for long enough, it will prepare you to create unknowns in your life. In the previous chapter, when I was instructing you to return to the present moment, I was referring to you stopping yourself from thinking about the predictable future or from remembering the familiar past and simply unfolding into this eternal vast space as an awareness. To no longer place your attention on anything or any one material in this three-dimensional reality, like your body the people in your life, the things that you own, the places you go, and time itself. If you do, do that properly, you are nothing but awareness. That's how you get there. That's what Dr. Joe talks about, being no one, nobody, nowhere, no thing, in no place, in no time. So now let's back up a bit and look at how scientists came to discover the quantum universe which happened when they began studying the subatomic world. They found that atoms, the building blocks of everything in this physical universe are made up of a nucleus surrounded by a large field containing one or more electrons. This field is so large in comparison with the tiny electrons that it appears to be 99. 9999999999% empty space. But as you just read, the space isn't actually empty. It's made up of a vast array of energetic frequencies that make up an invisible interconnected field of information. So everything in our known universe, although it may appear to be solid, 
it's actually 99.9999999999% energy or information. So in fact, most of the universe is made up of this empty space. Matter is an infinitesimally small component in relation to the, yeah. the immense space of nothing physical. So researchers soon discovered that the electrons that move around in the vast field behave in a completely unpredictable manner. They don't appear to be subject to the same laws that govern matter in our larger universe. So they're here in one moment and then gone the next. And it's impossible to predict where and when the electrons will appear. So that's because as the researchers eventually discovered, the electrons exist simultaneously in an infinite number of possibilities and probabilities. It's only when an observer focuses his or her attention and looks for some thing material that the invisible field of energy and information collapses into a particle as we know as an electron that is called collapsing the wave function or a quantum event but as soon as the observer looks away no longer observing the electron and taking his or her mind off the subatomic matter, it disappears back into energy. So in other words, that physical or that particle of physical matter, the electron can't exist until we observe it, give it our attention. And the moment we're no longer putting our attention on it, it turns particles, it turns into potential energy waveforms. Specifically an energetic frequency, which scientists call a wave and into possibility. And so in this way, mind and matter are related in quantum. So by the way, just as we as a subjective consciousness are observing the electron into form, there's an objective universal consciousness that is constantly observing all of us and our three-dimensional reality into order and form as well. So what that means for you is this. If you're viewing your life from the same level of mind every single day, anticipating a future based on your past, you are collapsing the infinite fields of energy into the same patterns of information called your life. And for example, if you wake up and you think, oh, where's my pain? Your familiar pain soon appears because you're expecting it to be there. Imagine what would happen instead if you were able to take your attention off of the physical and take it off of the physical world and the environment. And as you learned in the last chapter, when you take your attention off of your body, you become no body and you no longer have access to or any use for the senses. So when you take your attention off the people in your life, you become no one. And so you no longer have an identity as a parent, partner, sibling, a friend, or even as a member of a profession, a religious group, a political party, or even a nationality. You have no race, no gender, no sexual orientation, no age. When you take your attention off of objects and places in the physical environment, you are in no thing and nowhere. Finally, if you take your attention off of linear time, which has a past and a future, you are in no time. You are in the present moment in which all possibilities in the quantum field exist because you are no longer identifying with or connected to a physical world. You are no longer trying to affect matter, matter to matter. You are beyond matter and beyond how you identify yourself as a body in space and time. In a very real sense, you are in immense 
blackness of the unified field where nothing material exists. That's the direct effect of continuously laboring to get to the present moment that I described in the previous chapter. So the moment that happens, you unfold your attention and energy into an unknown field beyond matter where all possibilities exist and a field made up of nothing but invisible frequencies carrying information or consciousness. And just like the quantum scientist who took their attention off the electron only to find that it reverted to energy and possibility, if you were to take your attention off your life or get beyond the memory of your life, your life should turn into possibility. After all, if you focus on the known, you get the known. If you focus on the unknown, you create a possibility. The longer you can linger in that field of infinite possibilities as an awareness, aware that you are aware in this endless black space, without putting your attention on your body, on things or on people, places, and time, the longer you invest your energy into the unknown, the more you are going to create a new experience or new possibilities in your life. It's the law. Brain changes. When you walk through the door to the quantum field, you can't enter as somebody. You have to enter as nobody as only an awareness or a consciousness, a thought or a possibility, leaving behind everything else in the physical world and living only in the present moment. So, and as I said in the previous chapter, this process requires you to take a break from your chemical addiction, at least temporarily, to the same emotions that used to drive your thoughts and you stop feeling the same way so you can stop putting your attention on the three-dimensional world of matter and the particle. Instead, put your attention on energy or possibility, the wave. Given all that, you probably won't be surprised to learn that such an experience creates some pretty significant changes in your brain. First, because you are perceiving yourself as being beyond the physical world, which simply means that there's no outside danger to anticipate. Your brain, your thinking brain, the neocortex, the seat of your conscious mind slows down. It becomes less aroused and works in a more holistic fashion. Earlier, we talked about how living by the hormones of stress causes our brain waves to fire in a very disordered, incoherent pattern, which in turn means our bodies can't work effectively because we are trying to control and predict everything in our lives. And we become excessively focused, shifting our attention from one person to another thing, to some place at a certain time, activating various neurological networks that are assigned to each one of these knowns. So once we slip into the present moment and become aware of this infinite field of information where there is nothing physical, this external void, and once we are no longer analyzing or thinking about anybody, anyone, anything, any place or any time, we are no longer activating those different compartments of neural networks in our brain. And as we move our awareness, from a narrow focus or on matter, objects, people, places, our bodies and time in our external environment and instead open our focus and become aware of the vastness of this infinite blackness by putting our attention on nothing, on space and on energy and information, our brains begin to change. The different compartments, that were once subdivided, now start to unify and move towards a coherent whole brain state and different neural communities reach out and form bigger communities. They synchronize, they organize and they integrate. And what sinks in the brain begins to link in the brain. Once your brain gets coherent, 
you get coherent. When it gets orderly, you get orderly. When it works well, you work well. And in short, when it functions more holistically, you feel more whole. In other words, once you start connecting to the unified field as an awareness, or once you become more aware of it by paying attention to it, your biology becomes more whole and unified since the unified field is by definition a unifying energy. Okay. We have in chapter three, I did pull out this time the book so I can show you in the book, if you look at page 80, you'll see a diagram. Chapter two. And so I wanna share with you guys, this is what figure 3.1, and it shows you the difference between coherent and incoherent brain waves. And you'll see that the top image shows coherent brain waves. And here you're shown, you're seeing incoherent, resonant, dissonant. There's dissonance obviously in this brain here. Okay. All right. So when we take our attention off the material world, and begin to open our focus to the realm of the unknown and stay in the present moment, the brain works in a coherent manner. And when your brain is coherent, it is working in a more holistic state and you will feel more whole. So when the brain is aroused due to the hormones of stress and we're narrowing our focus and shifting attention from people, objects, things, and places in our known outer world, the brain fires incoherently. When our brain is out of balance in this way, you will be more fragmented, unfocused, and living in more of duality and separation. So to, to more clearly see the difference between coherence and incoherence, take a look at graphic two and the color insert as well. That's the diagram that I just showed you a minute ago. As you can see, when the brain waves are coherent, they are in phase with one another, both their crests, their high points and their troughs, their low points, they match because coherent brain waves are more orderly and they are also more powerful. You could say they speak the same language and they follow the same rhythm. They dance to the same beat and share the same frequency. So they find it easier to communicate. They're literally on the same wavelength. When brain waves are incoherent, like the bottom, like this bottom picture, when they're incoherent, on the other hand, the electrochemical messages or signals that they're sending to different parts of the brain and body are mixed and erratic. So the body cannot then operate in a balanced optimal state. The second change our brains experience when we enter the quantum is that our brain waves move into a slower frequency from beta brain waves to coherent alpha and theta brain waves. Now that's important because as we slow down the brain waves, our consciousness moves out of the thinking neocortex and into the midbrain. So from your neocortex, it goes to the midbrain, the limbic brain, and there it connects with the autonomic nervous system, the body's subconscious operating system. This is the part of the nervous system that is in charge of digesting food, secreting hormones, regulating body temperature, controlling blood sugar, keeping our heart beating, making antibodies, making antibodies that fight infections, repair damaged cells, and a myriad of other functions of our bodies over which most scientists believe we have no conscious control. Most scientists believe, I quote, we have no conscious control. We now know that that's different. Basically, the autonomic nervous system keeps you alive and its main job is to create order and homo homeostasis, which this in turn balances the brain and ultimately the entire body. 
So the more we can linger in the present moment as nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere, in no time, and more integrated and coherent our brain becomes. This is when the autonomic nervous system steps in and begins to heal the body because our conscious merges with consciousness. Now, let me stop here for a moment. We are right now on page 81. And I want to share with you just a few insights because some of us, uh, many of us are having, um, you know, either you have trauma from accidents or from maybe um, circumstances that have happened in your life and you have emotional trauma. Maybe you have both. Maybe you had uh, some horrible financial thing that happened to you unexpectedly. And now you have, as we discussed, like Anna, Anna in the first chapter one, she was healthy. She was a therapist. She was working fine. She thought everything was, you know, everything was copacetic. And then she had the shocking traumatic news that her husband had just committed suicide. And that was a monumental shocking event for her entire system. And so it was an emotional trauma. She basically suffered a very severe PTSD as a result of that particular event. And as you listened in chapter one and chapter two, you learned how her body began to decay and fall apart basically. And she ended up with cancer and a whole myriad of, of maladies. And so uh, I want to point out this issue of the brain coherence and incoherence. Sometimes we have um, relationships that are just there. We, one of the manifestations is either arguments or extreme separation in a relationship because your brain waves, it's more than just your brain waves. This chapter is talking about the brain waves. Later in the book, he goes on to talk about heart coherence. But when you are, out of brain and heart coherence with your partner over a prolonged period of time, it's inevitable that those two will separate and that they'll no longer to be a couple. Because if you are not in brain coherence and heart coherence with the love of your life, with your spouse, your partner, your boyfriend, your fiance, whoever it might be, and you don't get that into a right state where you get into the present moment where you take charge of that, then separation is the next logical step. And now you have the scientific proof. It's being explained to you here with all the research to back it up so that you understand really what's going on. And so this work that Dr. Joe has put together in Becoming Supernatural, it's to affect you as an entire being, your physical life, your emotional life, your spiritual life, your psychological life. Your, I mean, it covers every area of your life, make no mistake, including your financial life, all of it. And so that's what I love about this work because it's a, a holistic integrative approach to addressing your autonomic nervous system, which is what creates everything and you do it in 5d and what scientists thought that we couldn't do we have conclusive evidence that it does not and i'm not just going off of what he's saying i've actually done it myself and it is phenomenal which is why i'm sharing this with you here because now more than ever as we have the fear virus going crazy and going amok well i'm going to say it was going crazy and going amok i think we kind of have a handle on it now and it's it's no longer running off like a crazy stallion because we have enough of us that are doing this particular work to bring it down. And I'm engaging you through the use of these videos to get you to get on the same page of music, read, study, learn, and apply this information so that you can take charge of your life as you do this, even at a very tiny level. This affects all the people around you, all the people that are connected to you, your neighbors that live in your neighborhood, the people in your city, it really does have a quantum effect, even when you don't feel or think that anything is happening. So we'll address that um, a little bit later. So moving on here, as you slow your brain waves down and become less aware of your body, your environment and time, consciousness flows out of the neocortex and towards the limbic brain, the seat of your autonomic nervous system. 
and it's represented by the dark arrows moving towards the middle of the brain in this particular, go to the next diagram, into this diagram. So you'll see here how the arrow shows from here. This is the base of the brain. This is the front of the brain. This is your frontal lobe. And here is your limbic brain. It's in the middle. It's the area where your autonomic nervous system is uh, functioning and how you trigger it through the use of your pineal gland, etc. Okay. So at the same time as the two systems intersect, the autonomic nervous system, whose job is to create balance, steps in and creates coherence in the neocortex, the seat of your thinking mind represented by the lighter arrows moving out toward the edge of the brain. In other words, when you are in the present moment, you get out of your own way. As you become pure consciousness, pure awareness, and change your brain waves from beta to alpha, and then even to theta, the autonomic nervous system, which knows how to heal your body much better than your conscious mind does, steps in and finally has an opportunity to clean house. So that's what creates brain coherence. Now, if you look in graphics 3A and 3C in the color insert, you'll see three different brain scans. Graphic A is a normal brain scan. Yeah, this is really cool. 3A and 3C. So you have to go all the way to page, oh, they're not numbered back here. In the middle of the book, you'll see like these shiny colored pages. So you're gonna go there to like the third page and you're going to see If you can see here, let me see if the camera can get this. See the difference between these brain waves versus these brain waves. So if you look at 3A, graphic 3A is a normal scan of someone in normal thinking beta brain waves, and graphic B was recorded while a student was performing an open focus showing coherent synchronized alpha brain waves. Graphic 3C represents a deeper brainwave state of coherent synchronized theta, and that's this third one. Okay, so you see that the waves are uniform. All the waves have the same peaks and same valleys. You're not clashing against each other, so you don't have dissonance. So you have coherence instead of A. So if in this state you are no longer reaffirming the known, your same life, and instead you keep investing your energy into the unknown as you would invest money in a bank account, then you are able to create new unknown possibilities in your life, just as the material electron expands back to immaterial energy in the quantum field. Once scientists stop observing it, when you no longer observe your pain, your routine life and your problems, they'll turn back into energy. So they turn back into energy waveforms. So into an infinite number of possibilities, into pure potential. Only once you are truly present in this potent place, beyond this space and time, the place from where all things materially come, can you begin to create real change? I wanna pause here for a moment. Abraham Hicks, Teachings of Abraham by Esther, who channels the collective of Abraham. That's what she talks about, putting your hands onto that energy. And now you're molding the clay as you go into that meditative state. Now you focus your attention on what it is that you want by putting your focused awareness, just like Dr. Joe said, you're taking the wave forms of energy and you're turning them into electron particles just by paying attention to what it is that you want. And the longer that you hold your attention there, the more electrons you get, the more electrons you get, the more particles you get, the more particles you get, it starts to coalesce and it starts to solidify so that boom, at the most unexpected time, it's gonna pop into your 3D world and manifestation. So at a four day, we're gonna continue reading here, at a four day advanced workshop in 2016 in Tacoma, Washington, we conducted a study to show how this actually works. We measured the brain waves of 117 workshop participants using electroencephalograms, EEGs, 
measurements were taken before and after our workshop. We were looking to see if we could detect changes in two different measures of brain function. The first measure was how long it took the subjects to achieve a meditative state, defined by the ability to maintain an alpha brainwave state for at least 15 seconds. We found that the participants were able to achieve meditative states 18% quicker by the end of the four day workshop. The second measure we looked at was the ratio between delta brain waves associated with moving into deeper levels of subconscious mind and high, high range beta waves usually associated with really high levels of stress. Anxious people usually have lots of high beta and a lower level of delta brain wave frequencies. So we were looking to see if meditation, specifically the successful practice of slipping into the quantum realm and becoming nobody, no, no one, no thing, nowhere in no time might improve those values. And in fact, it did. Participants lowered their high range beta brain waves, indicating they were feeling less stress by an average of 100 24% and increased their delta brain waves, indicating a greater feeling of oneness during meditation by an average of 149%. The amount of high range beta brain waves diminished relative to the amount of delta waves by 62%. All of this happened in only four days. So look at figure 3.3 to see those results. And you'll notice that some of the changes we measured were greater than 100%, indicating that these participants were able to make unusually significant improvements relatively quickly. Now that's pretty supernatural. So let's show you really quick here, diagram 3.3, and it shows you the statistics that I just mentioned to you. You'll see, you see here that speed of attaining st a stable alpha state rose by 18% during those four days. The ratio of delta to beta brain waves increased by 62%. High beta brain waves, which is what your brain does when it's in a high um, stress state, it dropped 124%. And last but not least, that deep meditative state is measured by delta brain waves, and that rose 149%. If that's not spectacular, if that's not extraordinary, if that is not being supernatural, then I don't know what is. So this chart illustrates the changes of brainwave activity in our advanced workshop in Tacoma, Washington. So changing your energy combining a clear intention with elevated emotions. So once you're in that sweet spot of the generous present moment where all possibilities exist in the quantum field, how do you turn one or more of those potentials, those immaterial possibilities into reality in the three-dimensional world of matter? Now this requires two things, a clear intention, and an elevated emotion. Your clear intention is exactly what it sounds like. You have to get clear on what it is you want to create, getting as specific as possible and describe it in detail. Let's say you want to go on a great vacation. Where is it you want to go? How do you want it to get there? How do you want to get there? Who do you want to go with? Or who do you want to meet when you're there? What sort of accommodations do you want to stay in? What do you want to do or see when you're there? What food do you want to eat? What do you want to drink? What kind of wardrobe will you pack? What will you buy to bring home? You get the point. Make it detailed. Make it as real as you can because you're going to assign a letter to 
to it. You're going to assign a letter as a symbol of possibility to all of those conditions. As you read in the previous chapter, those thoughts which make up your intention are the electrical charge you are sending into the unified field. Now you have to combine, combine that intention with an elevated emotion such as love, gratitude, inspiration, joy, excitement, awe, or wonder, to name just a few examples. You have to tap into the feeling you anticipate you will have when you manifest your intent and then feel the emotion ahead of the experience. The elevated emotion which carries a higher energy is the magnetic charge. You are sending it out into the quantum field. And as you have read, when you combine the electric charge, your intention, with the magnetic charge, your elevated emotion, you create an electromagnetic signature that is equal to your state of being. Sidebar, it affects your electromagnetic field, also known as your torus, your toroidal field. Those are physics, those are scientific terms. So another way to describe these elevated emotions is to call them heartfelt emotions. Usually when we feel emotions like those I just mentioned, we notice that our heart begins to swell. That's because our energy is moving into that area. And as a result, we feel these wonderful elevated feelings that carry an intent to give to care for, to nurture, to trust, to create, to connect, to feel, to, to feel safe, to serve, and to be thankful. Unlike the stress emotions, which we discussed in the previous chapter, that draw from the invisible field of energy and information that surrounds the body, these heartfelt emotions contribute to the body's energy field. In fact, the energy that is created when the heart opens makes the heart become more orderly and coherent, just like the brain. So it produces a measurable magnetic field. It's this action that connects us to the unified field. And when we marry this intention with that energy, the magnetic charge, we create a new electromagnetic field. So since energy is frequency and all frequency carries information, it is that elevated energy that carries your thought or intention. So remember, those potentials in the quantum field exist only as electromagnetic frequencies. That's frequencies with information. And you cannot perceive them with your senses as matter as of yet. It makes sense then that the new electromagnetic signal you broadcast would attract those electromagnetic frequencies in the field that are in fact a vibrational match to it. So in other words, when there is a vibrational match between your energy and any potential that already exists in the unified field, you begin to draw that new experience to you. It will find you as soon as you become the vortex to your future. So in that way, you don't have to work to bring what you want to manifest to you, and you don't have to go anywhere to get it. That's changing matter, matter for matter. You have to become pure consciousness. Nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere in no time. And change your energy, the electromagnetic signal. You're going to change energy changing energy into matter. So you will then draw that future experience right to you by changing energy into matter. You will literally tune into the energy of a new future. And as you do so, the observer, the unified field, is observing you. Observe a new destiny. And it then endorses your creation. So take a glance at figure 3.4. So 3.4 shows you, and as you have different experiences, you, you crystallize and detail 
you know, you write down in detail what it is that you want and then you assign it a letter. So here you see the person and in this case they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They have eight different things that they're working on manifesting at the same time. And so they just assign letters to it. Okay. I want to show you, show you mine. I have, oops, put the mic here. I have, this is my list. You see that I have um, letters and symbols inside of them. You see I already crossed one out because I started this on 321 and right away I had one that manifested all already. So I, so I crossed it off because as soon as you mana, as soon as you bring it into 3D, you need to cross it out or you might lose the thing that you've brought in. So you got to make sure you cross it off. It's uh, part of the Zygarnik effect. If you look into, I'm going to encourage you to Google that too. Read up about it. It has to do with cycles of you open and create something, and then you have to have a finality. You have to have closure. You have to complete it. Otherwise, you're going to be losing a lot of energy because you have these open loops that haven't been completed. And so your subconscious is going to drain energy. It's like, oh yeah, I still have to fi finish that. I still have to finish that. So anyhow, we're moving on. We're going to continue here. Take a glance at 3.4. So we already showed that to you guys. So moving on. All possibilities exist in the quantum field. They exist in the present moment as an electromagnetic potential. So you just saw the diagram. So now once we're in that present moment, there are infinite possibilities that exist in the quantum field as electromagnetic frequencies. And as you combine a clear intention with elevated emotions, you are broadcasting a whole new electromagnetic signature into the field. When there's a vibrational match between your energy and the energy of that potential, the longer you're conscious of that energy, the more you will draw that experience to you. So each letter represents a different potential. R is a new relationship, J is a job, P is a problem being resolved in your life, M is a mystical experience, G is a genius mind, A abundance, O is opportunity. I'm going to stop right here. Those are suggestions that he's giving. He's letting you know what they, what those letters stand for in this particular diagram. You and your life, whatever resonates with you, you pick, you know, if you're trying to manifest a new job, then of course, J makes to, J seems to make sense to me and to him. If a different letter, you know, maybe you're looking to work for, I don't know, uh, Apple. Maybe you want to put A for Apple because you want to go work for Apple as a whatever, the case, you know, marketer, programmer, whatever the case might be. So you get to pick. It's your creation. So you get to pick the letter. You get to detail, you know, specifically pick what it is that you want and assign a letter to it, which is a symbol in your mind's eye. Okay. So before we go any further, I just want to back up a bit to emphasize how important elevated emotions are for this equation to work. After all, when you decide to observe a future in the quantum field that you want to manifest, if you're doing it as a victim or as someone who's suffering or feeling limited or unhappy, your energy is not going to be consistent with your intended creation and you won't be able to call the new future to yourself. That's the past. You may have a clear intention and therefore your mind may be in the future because you can imagine what you want. But if you feel any of those familiar limited emotions from your past, your body still believes it's in the same limited past experiences. So as you learned from the previous chapter, emotion is energy in motion and elevated emotions carry a higher frequency than survival emotions. So if you want to create change, you have to do it from a level of energy that's greater than guilt, greater than pain, greater than fear, greater than anger, greater than shame, greater than unworthiness. In fact, any lower vibrational energy that you are feeling cannot carry the thought of your future dream. It will only carry a level of consciousness equal to those limited emotions of the past. Therefore, if you're going to perform something that's unlimited, you'd better feel unlimited. If you want to create freedom, you'd better feel free. And if you want to truly heal yourself, you'd better raise your energy to wholeness. The more elevated the emotion you feel, the greater the energy you broadcast and the more influence you will have on the material world of matter. And the greater your energy, the shorter the amount of time it takes 
for your manifestation to appear in your life. I'm going to reread that last sentence because I think it's so important. And the greater your energy, the shorter the amount of time it takes for your manifestation to appear in your life. So get exuberant, get joyous, get ecstatic, get blissed out, get thrilled, get jazzed, get jacked, get whatever it is where you're like, yes, 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 that's the key. And fake it till you make it. Your brain, your brain is the organ that's interpreting these vibrations. You are using your conscious awareness and you are going to act as if, pretend, make believe, pretend, just like when you were a kid. Pretend that you're blissed out, thrilled, excited. Oh my gosh. Yes, I knew it. Oh my gosh, I got this. This is how it's done. Oh my gosh. I'm not joking, ladies and gentlemen. This is how it's done. A clear intention, an elevated emotion. And once you have that heart and that brain coherence, and you're doing that, after you get to that state of heart, you have to have an open heart. You have to have heart rate and brain coherence. Now you're whole, you're in the void, you're in that space of blackness where you're no one, nobody, nowhere, no place, no thing in no time. That's where you craft, that's where you mold the clay. You take those waveforms, you turn them into electrons, which are particles, and you keep milking it, keep milking it. And your inner being, your, you will know when to stop, you know, keep on crafting it. You'll know when it's done. And then when you come back, you're like, oh my gosh, the order is in. I don't know when, I don't know how, and it doesn't matter. The cool thing is I know it's done. No different than when I do control A to select all the text on a document on my computer, and then I do control C to copy it, and then I go control V to paste it. I'm not questioning if that's working. You just do it because you know that it works. That's what we are doing with our conscious awareness, with our focus and our brain. We are commanding our brain and we are literally instructing it what to do. The brain, because you're going, oh my gosh, this is so cool, this is great. And then you seal that with, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm like, I'm so thankful. Thank you, God. Thank you, universe. Thank you, infinite source intelligence. Thank you, angelic beings. Thank you, ascended masters. Thank you, all the powers that be. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you're in that deep state of appreciation. Well, gratitude and appreciation is the ultimate state of receivership. Your brain is not going to know that that hasn't happened yet. As far as it's concerned, it happened because it happened in 5D. The fact that you have these elevated emotions and now you are in gratefulness, you are in the energy of gratitude and appreciation, it's going to assume that it happened already. And so guess what? That's what magnetizes it into your 3D reality. Now, as you continue to rehearse that, the next time you go into meditation, you do it again and you get jazzed up over it again. It may happen before you get a chance to do another meditation. That has happened to me without a shadow of a doubt. So that is how you do this. Okay, so moving on. So we left off with, and the greater your energy, the shorter the amount of time it takes for your manifestation to appear in life. So exciting. So in this process, you relax and allow a greater mind, the consciousness of the unified field to organize an event that's right for you. You essentially get out of the way. When you are surprised by an unknown experience that seems like it came out of nowhere, that's because you created it in nowhere. Something appeared out of nothing because you created it in no thing. And it can happen in no time if you created it in the realm beyond linear time. That's the quantum field where there is no time. So a French researcher named René Pioc, PhD, demonstrated the power of intention with newly hatched baby chicks. When chicks hatch, they usually imprint on their mother, bonding with her and following her around. But if the mother isn't there, when the baby chicks hatch, 
they'll imprint on the first moving object they encounter. So for example, if a chick first sees a human, it will follow the human around in the same way. So for his study, Piak built a special type of random event generator. It's a computerized robot that would turn randomly as it moved around in the arena, going right 50% of the time and going left 50% of the time. As a control, he first recorded the robot's path in the arena with no chicks present. He found that over time, the robot covered most of the arena equally. Next, Piak exposed newly hatched chicks to the robot. And as expected, they imprinted on the robot as if it was their mother and followed it all over the arena. After the chicks had imprinted on the robot, he removed them from the arena and put them in a cage on one side where they could see the robot but not move toward it. This is going to will show you the path of the random event generator in the experiment of Rene Piak. And the first one is the control experiment where the cage is empty up here. And the second one, the intention experiment, the cage was filled with chicks that imprinted on the random agent event generator, which is the second one. So what's gonna, what you're gonna see that happens next is so fascinating. So an illustration of the results of Rene Piak's baby chick experiment. The box A represents the movement of the random event generator when the cage was empty. Box B shows the movement of the random event generator when the chicks were placed in the cage to the right of the arena. If the intentions of the chicks could influence the random event generator to move toward them a majority of the time, Imagine what you can do in drawing your new future to you. I'm going to show that picture to you again because check that out. Look at the difference. Imagine what could you do with that. So what happened next was astonishing. The intention of the baby chicks to be near to what they believe to be their mother, in this case, the robot, actually influenced the random movements of the robot. It no longer moved all over the arena, but instead remained in the half of the arena closest to the chicks. If the intentions of the baby chicks can influence the movement of a computerized robot, just imagine what you can do in drawing your future to you. So let's think about this. I'm gonna pause here because that robot is all metal and plastic. Maybe might have some elements of glass. I don't know because I've never built a robot and I don't know anybody who builds robots, but I think it's safe to say that we can assume that the majority of it is all man-made elements, you know, different metals and plastics and possibly glass or crystal elements. So steel being and metals being as they are, you know, they are good conductors of electricity. So it appears that it doesn't matter, no pun intended, <laughs> but the chicks were able to influence this random event generator, this robot that was programmed to go 50%. It was actually programmed to go 50% to the left and 50% to the right. And because the chicks wanted to be close to the robot that was programmed, that had a random event generator, it overrode the program of going 50% to the left and 50% to the right. And instead, their collective desire to want to be close to the robot made the robot's programming to be overwritten. And now it was drawn to the chicks because the chicks couldn't get to it. 
something to think about, isn't it? Those are little chicks. Your electromagnetic frequencies are far greater than that of those electromagnetic frequencies of those little chicks. Imagine what you can do. Better yet, imagine what we can do as we all take back our power and choose to create our reality in 5D. We can manifest a radical transformation for the greater good of all beings on and off this planet. Does that make sense? So exciting. What happened next was astonishing. The intention of the baby chicks to be near to what they believed to be their mother, in this case, the robot, actually influenced the random movements of the robot. It no longer moved all over the arena, but instead remained in the half of the arena closest to the chicks. So if the intentions of baby chicks can influence the movements of a computerized robot, just imagine what you can do in drawing your future to you. In this place of the unified field, you're actually becoming aware of what already exists and you're bringing it to life with your attention and your intention intention it's attention inside i think people sometimes aren't sure about well what does it mean to have an intent what does it mean to have an intention it's attention inside that's in tension get it the clues are actually in the words inside in tension Okay, here you get to be the genius, you get to be the magician, you get to be the molder, the sculptor of the clay. You can be abundant, you can be healthy, you can be wealthy, you can have a mystical experience, you can create a new job, you can resolve a problem in your life. Remember, all these possibilities exist as an electromagnetic potentials in the quantum field. You cannot experience them with your senses because you don't yet exist in this space and time. They exist only as a frequency or energy carrying information that has to be tuned into and observed into this particular space and time. So in order for you to do this properly, you're going to have to connect to that information and energy with your energy and intention, attention inside, intention. So here's another way to look at it. If you're unified with the consciousness and the energy of everybody, everyone, everything, every place, every time, within a vast unified field of potentials, then observing a potential in the quantum is just like becoming aware of your hand in the physical world. You've already connected to it. It already exists. Tuning into the energy of your future and intentionally observing the potential in the quantum then causes infinite fields of energy to collapse into particles, into electrons called a quantum event. And that becomes an experience that can then manifest in your physical three-dimensional world. Then when you get up from your meditation, even though you're back in the 3D dimensional world of matter, because you already experienced the elevated emotion, you anticipate ahead of the experience, you have no choice but to get up feeling as if your intent has already manifested or as if your prayer is already answered. You feel intimately connected to your near future knowing it will show up in a way you can't predict because if you can predict it, then it's known. In effect, you get up as a new self, one who feels more like energy than matter. But you must remain aware because the moment you forget and start stressing out about when it's going to happen or how it's going to happen, you're back to your old self, trying to predict the future based on the past. And then you start feeling the same old familiar emotions with the same lower energy that influence your same old thoughts. And you've just made the choice to stay trapped into the known. And we could say that you'll disconnect from the energy of your future the moment you feel the familiar energy of the emotions of your past. So if you instead become successful at tuning into this new potential, you have chosen over and over and over again, and you get familiar with it, you'll be able to tune into it when you're sitting in traffic. You can do it when you're shaving. You can do it when you're cooking. You can do it when you're taking a walk. 
you can do it over and over again with your eyes open, just as you do when your eyes are closed in meditation. Just remember, every time you tune into the energy of your future in the present moment, you are drawing your future to you. And if you do it often, often enough, and you do it correctly, you change your biology from a past present reality into a future present reality. That is, you will change your brain neurologically from being a record of the past to becoming a map to the future. At the same time, as you teach your body emotionally what the future will feel like in the present moment, you're going to recondition your body with this new elevated emotion and you'll be able to signal new genes in new ways and you'll change your body to look like the future you choose with your clear intention, which has already happened. And that means you begin to biologically wear your future. Okay, I'm going to pause here. If you watched the interview that I did, the Dr. Joe testimonial of Alexandra Cousins, she actually talks about how when she did this in her meditation, and she was very, very ill, and she had all these mystery maladies and diseases, and her body was constantly breaking down. She was actually even living in another country. She moved from Europe to South Africa, and her and her husband didn't want to be in South Africa anymore. They wanted to move somewhere. They didn't know where, but they knew that they wanted to leave there. And both of them were in very unsatisfying jobs, and they wanted, she wanted to quit being a designer and he wanted I don't know I don't recall what he did but they both wanted to change their professions and but more importantly she just wanted to heal and feel better and she talks about how in meditation as she in future she vision casted she projected forward she created what it was that she wanted and she saw herself healthy and she saw herself wealthy and she saw herself vibrant and feeling good and feeling strong she said that she actually stepped into that. She saw herself, she created the figure, and she said then she stepped into that new meat suit in her vision as she was doing this in 5D. And then she could feel how good that body felt as she stepped into it and she embodied it. That's part of the secret to having this manifest and have it become a reality. And then lo and behold, Months, not years, not decades, months later, guess what? She is no longer living in South Africa. She is now living in Gallier in Bali. You'll have to check out that particular interview to hear that whole experience. It really is quite magical. She's living in paradise on multiple levels. It's extraordinary. So moving on back to the book, Jace Goes Quantum. This is one of my favorite stories. Jace Goes Quantum. So when my oldest son, Jace, finished graduate school, he went to work for a large company in Santa Barbara that made sophisticated cameras for the military. And when he completed his contract, he moved to San Diego to work with a startup. So after a while though, he became disillusioned with the management and decided to leave the company and travel. So he's a big wave surfer. So he came up with an elaborate plan to go over to Indonesia, Australia, New Zealand. For seven months, he packed up his suitcase with his surfboards and off he went. And he had the time of his life. After six months, he called me from New Zealand and said, Dad, listen, I have to start thinking about what I'm going to do when I get back to the real world. I want to create a new and better job than my previous ones, but I want to do it differently. I've learned a lot from taking time off. Okay, I responded. There must be a new potential in the quantum field that you can tune into that's related to a new job for you. Take out a piece of paper. Write down the letter J on it. Draw two squiggly lines around it to represent the electromagnetic field. Hang on, because you're going to do the same something similar in the meditation at the end of this chapter. So once he'd done that, I said, that J 
is a symbol that represents possibility. Your clear intention of the job you want. But now you have to get very clear on exactly what kind of job you want. So let's list what's important to you in this job. I want you to think about the conditions of what letter J for new job means to you. Under J, I want you to write the word intention and list the specifics of what you want in your new job. You can write down anything you want except when or how it is going to happen. I want to be able to work from anywhere in the world, he told me, and I want to make my, the same amount of money I was making at my old job or more. I want to have an independent contract for six months a year, and I have to love what I do. Good. Anything else I asked? Yeah, I want to be my own boss, and I want to lead my own team, he said. Okay, now you have your clear intention, I told him. Every time you think of this new letter J, you can associate the letter with the meaning you just gave it. All the specifics of what you want that you listed. So he continued to do that. Then I asked him to think about how he was going to feel when it happened. Next to or below your sub intentions that you listed to get clear on your new job, I told him, I want you to write elevated emotions, the energy of my future. Now let's list them one by one. What are they? Empowered, in love with life, free and grateful, he told me, identifying the elevated emotions he yeah. would use to bring this job to him. All that was left was just making everything line up. So take a look at figure 3.6 to see what Jace did. So you have plenty of time on your hands right now, especially, especially all of us who are in this global, it's basically a global health reset. It's really the proper way to frame this. Okay, so you have plenty of time on your hands right now. You're not going to do much, but this is Dr. Joe telling his son, Jace. You're not gonna do much surfing and relaxing on vacation, I told him. So it's easy for you to create your future right now. Will you commit to doing what it takes to broadcast a new signature into the field every day? He agreed. Then I reviewed with him the concept of finding the present moment and getting centered and raising his energy so, he, so that energy would carry his intention for his future. Just hold that symbol in your mind's eye while you radiate that energy into the space beyond your body in space, I instructed, like tuning into a radio station and picking up a frequency that carries information. The longer your awareness lingers in this energy or the longer you are conscious of the energy of your future, the more likely you will be to call that experience to you. So just tune into the energy of your future every day and remember whatever you broadcast into the unified field is your experiment with destiny when there is a vibrational match between your energy and the energy of this potential it will find you so jace can you stay there yeah he replied so if you go to your book to page 78, you will see this is what Jace, this is what Jace wrote. Now I'm noticing that on YouTube, the words are appearing backwards. So you'll just have to open up your book or your Kindle book. And when would now be a good time to maybe pick up the Becoming Supernatural on Amazon and Kindle. Yes, I'm going to suggest you get both because one thing is for you to sit down and read it. The other thing is you can play it so that you can listen to it as you're getting ready in the morning, as you're brushing your teeth, as you're doing whatever. Change your habits up, just like Dr. Joe talks about in the book. Let's, you're creating the new you. You're creating what you really want. If you're really serious about this, Right now would be the best time to start, wouldn't you agree? Don't just hear about it. Don't be a spectator. Be on the, be on the five yard line of the football game. Don't be up in the nosebleed section of the bleachers. Come on. 
this, there's no accident that you're on this broadcast watching this right now. It's because your inside inner being wants this. You want this. What have you got to lose? You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Nothing to lose, everything to gain. So this is how my son Jace created his new job. J is the symbol that represents a potential new experience. And on the left side, under intention, he assigned specific conditions of this type of job he would like. On the right side, under elevated emotion, he assigned specific emotions he would feel when the experience happened. By combining these two elements, he changed his energy every day to draw this new job to him. Isn't this perfect information for what our entire globe is going through right now? Where all the um, levels of economy, the scales of economy, there's a lot of sorting, sifting, and separating that's going on right now. Massive fortunes are in the process of being created right now, in this very second. It's got to be somebody. Why not you? It's not like all the money, all the wealth on the globe has vanished. It's still here. Claim your portion of it. Take those energy waveforms. Turn them into particles so that those electrons start to gather together. They start to coalesce. And then boom, at the least unexpected time, it will surprise and delight you. And then once you've been in that new state of being for some time, I want you to think about what you're going to do in your next new job, I continued. So what choices will you make? What things will you do? What experiences await you and how will they feel? I want you to live in that future reality in the present moment. Simply remember your future from that new state of being. Just as people tend to obsess about the worst thing that could happen to them in their lives every day, I was instead asking my son to obsess about some of the greatest things that could happen when his new job found him. Think about all the time you will have to surf the traveling you can continue to do, the team of people you will work with, their strengths, and the money you can save for a new house and a new car, I encouraged him. Have fun with those ideas each day, just like the piano players and the muscle exercise exercisers that you read about in the last chapter. Jace was about to prime his brain and body to look as if the future he wanted had already occurred. Pause button. It's something we've all done. Every single one of us as a child played make-believe. We pretended. You, if you pretended to do cops and robbers and you took a stick off of a branch or a bush from your backyard and you used it as, a, as either a gun or as a bow and arrow, as you took that and you made believe it was a gun, when you first grabbed it, you were aware that it was a stick. But as you played with your brother or your neighbor, and you were shooting it off, it went from you perceiving it to be a stick to it really being a gun, a rifle, or whatever type of thing it was that you thought you had in your hand. And you were fully engrossed, running around, yelling, screaming, having a great time. And we played like that for hours, hours and hours on end. And now you are just exercising that old muscle. You're gonna accept, believe, and resender, accept, believe, and surrender to the future you and make believe that it has already happened and have that elevated emotion of joy, of excitement, of gratitude, of, of, of even euphoria and bliss and gratitude. Moving on. And since where you place your attention is where you place your energy, I continued, I want you to invest your attention and your energy into that new future. And just as your body follows your mind to to the shower every morning, to a known. If you keep doing this process, your body is going to follow your mind to the unknown. Jace agreed to do the meditation every day. One month later, he returned and the moment he landed in LA, he texted me and said, hey dad, I'm in the US again. Can I talk to you? You know, can we talk? Uh-oh, I thought, here we go. So I called him and I asked how things were going. Great, Jace said. Uh, but I kind of ran out of money. I don't know what I'm going to do. Now the father in me wanted to say, don't worry, son, I'll spot you some money until you get back on your feet. But the teacher in me prevailed and responded, 
That's so cool because now you're really going to have to create. Now you're in the unknown. So let me know how it goes. And I hung up. I could feel his discomfort, but I know my son and I knew he would get focused and do the work. Since he was really feeling the heat now, Jace had to seriously step up his game. He drove to Santa Barbara to see his college roommates and a bunch of them went snowboarding for four days, just as they do every year when they get together. And when the four day weekend was over, he stopped back in Santa Barbara before coming home and he happened to walk into a surf shop. All of a sudden, he saw the top surfboard fin designer in the world who also just happened to be there. They started talking. And before long, the designer told Jace, I'm looking for an engineer to design surfboard fins. We're going to revolutionize the industry together. I need him for six months to a year and he can run his own show, do whatever he wants. All I care about is ending up with a high quality product. I'm getting goosebumps just reading this. You know how the story ends. Jace got the job with a one-year contract that he can renew at any time. He makes more money now than he did on his other job. He loves his new career because of his passion for surfing. Sometimes he texts me and says, I can't believe they pay me to show up and do this. He's his own boss. He can work from wherever he wants to, and he gets to go surfing to try out all the fins. He is in love with his life. He didn't have to send a resume. He didn't have to make a phone call, didn't have to write an email. He didn't have to go anywhere or to interview or fill out an application. The experience found him. When we become nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere, no time, we are taking our attention off the distractions in our outer world that keep us from being present with the unified field of intelligence that is within us and all around us. And we are turning inward and being present with a consciousness that is always present with us. The moment we line up with this omnipresent consciousness, as if we were looking directly into a mirror, it looks back at us and it can finally reflect back what we show it we want. The longer we linger in this place of nothing material and invest our attention and energy into it, the closer we move to the unified field. And when we are at the altar of infinite potentials, we, when we change our energy, we change our lives. So as we move toward it and trust in the unknown without returning our awareness to the material world of the senses in three-dimensional reality, we experience more oneness and wholeness within. That process begins to fulfill our lack, our separation, our duality, our disease, and our fractured personalities. Our biology becomes more whole as we become more whole. After all, when we are whole, there's simply no lack. Nothing can be missing, and at that point, we are simply observing what already exists in the quantum field of all possibilities or potentials and bringing it to life with our attention and our energy. So now I have to ask you, what experience is out there in quantum field waiting to find you, preparing to tune in? This meditation requires a little advanced preparation. So first I want you to think about the potential experience you want to have. And remember that just like the electron, before it collapses the waveform into matter, the experience already exists in an energy or a frequency in the quantum field. This is the energy that you're about to tune into. So some of our students have lowered their cholesterol levels just by tuning into a, a new potential. They've lowered their cancer markers. They've made tumors disappear. They've also created great new jobs, all expense paid vacations, new healthy relationships, more money, profoundly mystical experiences, and even winning lottery tickets. Believe me, my team and I have seen it all. So go ahead, step into the unknown. Once you have a new experience you wanna create, 
assign a capital letter to it and then write it, write that letter down on a piece of paper. Think of a letter as a symbol that represents a specific possibility in your life. Actually putting it on paper instead of only thinking about it is important because the act of writing it down solidifies that you want it. Then draw two squiggly lines that are circular around it that represent the electromagnetic magnetic field you need to generate around your body. So I'm gonna say that again. Then you're gonna draw, instead of two solid circles, you're gonna make them squiggly around the, the letter, two of them. And it's representing the electromagnetic field that you need to generate around your body to match the potential in quantum. So now assign some meaning to that letter so you can generate an even clearer intention. So think of some specific refinements of what you want and list at least four of them. The only thing I want you, the only thing I don't want you to consider including is any mention of a time frame. So for example, if your intention is a great job, your your list might look, look something like this. First bullet point, making 50,000 a year more than I'm making now. Second bullet point, managing my own team of awesome professionals. Third bullet point, traveling all over the world on a generous expense account. Fourth bullet point, having exceptional health benefits and great stock options. Fifth bullet point, making a difference in the world. Now on that same piece of paper, write down the emotions you will feel when the imagined potential happens. You might write, empowered, unlimited, grateful, free, in awe, in love with life, joyful and worthy. Whatever it is for you, write it down. And if you think you won't know how it's going to feel because you haven't experienced it yet, then try gratitude. That works really well. Gratitude is a powerful emotion to use for manifesting because normally we feel gratitude after we receive something. So the emotional signature of gratitude means it's already happened. That's why it's the ultimate state of receivership. When you are thankful or you feel appreciation, you are in the ultimate state to receive. When you embrace gratitude, your body as the unconscious mind will begin to believe it is in that future reality in the present moment. These various emotions you just listed are the energy that is going to carry your intention. This is not an intellectual process. It's a visceral one. So you have to really feel the emotions. You have to teach, teach your body emotionally what the future is going to feel like before it happens. And you have to do that in the now, in the present moment. So now that you're ready for the meditation, you can purchase the Tuning Into New Potential CD or the MP3 download from drjoedispenza.com and follow along as I guide you, or you can choose to do the meditation on your own, either one. I'm going to preface this by saying this is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form by Dr. Joe Dispenza, by Amazon, by anyone. This is purely my way of paying it forward, my passion project um, to you, the one person who is watching this right now, okay? So tuning into new potentials meditation. So start by resting your attention in different parts of the body, as well as the space around the parts of the body. This is really important. I'm going to read that again. You're going to start by resting your attention on different parts of your body, as well as the space around your body. You will learn more about this and why it's important in the next chapter. But for now, it's enough to know that focusing on the space around your body helps change your brain waves, moving you from an incoherent beta brainwave pattern to a coherent alpha and theta brainwave pattern. Become aware of the infinite vast space way out behind your eyes in this eternal black space, the space in the center of your head, the space between the back of your throat and the back of your head, and then beyond your head and space. Then move to becoming aware of the space in the center of your throat, the space beyond your throat and around your neck the space in the center of your chest, the space around your body, the space behind your navel, 
and finally the space around your hips in the endless black void all the way around you. With each of these, take your time and feel it and become aware of it and stay present with it. Become aware of the vastness of the space that the room you're in occupies in space and then extend your awareness to the vastness of the space beyond your room in space and finally to the vastness of space that all of space occupies in space and now it's time to take your attention off your body the environment and time and to become nobody no one no thing nowhere and no time to become pure consciousness to unfold as an awareness into this infinite black space and endless field where all possibilities exist if you get distracted simply return to the present moment as we discussed in the previous chapter keep unfolding into this immaterial space by continuously reinvesting your attention into it now think about the potential that already exists in the quantum field that you want to tune into by remembering your letter sense the energy of that future potential within you and all around you and tune into your future when you do this you will be moving into a new state of being broadcasting a whole new electromagnetic signature into the field when there's a vibrational match between your energy and that potential the new event is going to find you and you don't have to make anything happen i want to be clear it might take more than a few meditations for your future opportunity to unfold it could happen in a week a month or even longer the key is to keep doing it until it occurs now once you are in a new state of being broadcasting a new electromagnetic signature now remember your future before it happens and begin to mentally rehearse what the future will be like by living in that future make it as real as possible calling up those elevated emotions you listed so you can teach your body emotionally what the future feels like surrender your creation to a greater mind planting a seed in the infinite field of possibilities and just let it go let it go finally bless your body with a new mind bless your life bless your challenges Bless your soul, bless your past, bless your future, bless the divine within you and open your heart and give thanks for a new life before it is made manifest. Slowly bring your awareness back into the room and when you're ready, open your eyes. Get up from your meditation as though your future has already happened and let the synchronicities and new possibilities find you. Well, that is chapter three. And what a treat it has been to be able to share this with you. And I'm so excited that you're able to watch this on YouTube Live. We will have the edited version of this that has a few more bells and whistles and it's more complete than this particular live YouTube video and that will be on love and money secrets TV if you want to tune in to that and get the entire broadcast perhaps you want to listen and study it again which I would encourage you to do uh, just go to damelillianwalker.com and you'll see my YouTube channel there and you'll see the chapter one and eventually chapter two and this chapter three which Hopefully we'll go up in the next 24 hours and uh, and please like share and subscribe if you feel so inclined to do so that would be wonderful that would help more people find this type of material just as you have found this and that's it I'm going to also highly encourage you it is Sunday and Dr. Lipton actually went on live yesterday and put out a special urgent message because at 11 o'clock tonight which is in a little less than 30 minutes there is an energy portal that actually um, opened up and so the call to action cta call to action is for all of us every human being on the planet to take advantage of this energy and employ this information employ this elevated emotion of love for the greater good of all so that everyone heals everyone is coherent everyone is balanced 
because we have a massive energy surge that is taking place right now. So open your heart. Just all you have to do is intend it. Don't doubt it. Believe if your intention, if your attention to the insight is for your heart to be open, it is open. If you choose to spread the love and you choose to feel a deeper and greater love than you ever have before, you will, in fact, don't doubt it. The doubt, you're thinking that maybe you're not doing right, that's your ego, and that's your past personality trying to keep you small. So just tell it to shut up. Say, no, brain, do as I say. I'm the focused awareness. I'm the master. You do as I say. I am going to open up my heart. We are opening my heart now. I am expanding the love and I am sharing the love. I want my electromagnetic frequency to not just hit nine or 10 meters wide. I don't want it to just be 10 or 12 feet wide. I want it to engulf my entire household. I want it to engulf my entire city block. In fact, I want it to engulf my entire city. Heck, let me have it cover my entire state. While I'm at it, let me have it cover all of the United States. Let me have it cover all of North America. If I can get all of North America, let's do the entire globe. Oh, you know what? Let me have it hit all the galaxies, all the universes, all states of being, period, and let it go. And that's all you're doing. Very simple, easy peasy. So thank you for tuning in. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to post your comment below. I always make sure to reply to everybody and look at the description below. It'll tell you if you want a private one-on-one, -on -one, you can contact me for a private one-on-one -on -one session. All right, take care now. Peace and love always. Ciao for now.